seventh environment and land use committee meeting to order um, roll call of members uh, Randy Stacy Dave Tony Don welcome new face to the committee and Andy is present um, staff we have Virgin and, and Mike here at this point so uh, I certify that open meeting law requirements have been met with proper posting we have an 18 item agenda I would enter Motion to approve by Larson, second by Klein. Uh, Stacy did. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Um, has everyone had a chance to read through the meeting minutes from November 2nd? Any corrections or additions to that? Hearing none. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Larson. Second. Second by Klein. <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, any other comments? Otherwise, uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Um, we are set up to do begin our public hearing at this time uh, on the land use change rezone from re rural residential to exclusive agriculture to EA2 to commercial. Uh, by Theron and Rebecca Solberg, landowner petitioner of Ettrick, Town of Gale. So I will call this public hearing to order at 8.31. And uh, Randy, if you would read the hearing notice. There will be a public hearing before the Trumple County Environment and Land Use Committee on Wednesday, December 7, 2022 at 8.30 a.m. in the county boardroom of the courthouse 36245 Main Street, Whitehall, Wisconsin. The purpose is a land use change re rezone from rural residential and exclusive, exclusive ag to commercial on approximately 4.227 acres to bring the zoning into compliance with an already established trailer sales business. Part of the northwest quarter of the southeast quarter and part of the southwest quarter of the northeast quarter, all in the section of uh, all in uh, section three. Town 19 North, Range 8 West, Town of Gale, Trumple County, Wisconsin, consisting of three parcels. Hearing is requested by Theron E. and Rebecca L. Solberg, Ettrick, Wisconsin, landowner, Theron E. Solberg, petitioner. Trumple County invites you to join in this meeting as follows. To provide public comment on these hearings, please call 715-538-1770. Your attendance and comments are encouraged at this hearing. If you are unable to attend and have any questions, please call Verge Gamroth with the Department of Land Management at 715-538-1916 or email at verge.gamroth at county.trumplo.wisconsin.us. If you are unable to attend and desire to submit a written comment, please send your written comment to the Department of Land Management P.O. Box 67, Whitehall, Wisconsin, 54773, or email Verge once again. Please know that written comments will be read at the public hearing up to 250 words. All written comments must include the name and address of its author and the request that the letter be read at a particular meeting date. Any special interest groups or expert witnesses will be allowed 20 minutes to give a, a presentation and must register at least one week prior to the meeting date. By, Paul, by calling Verge at the Department of Land Management, 715-538-1916. Sincerely, Verge Camera Service Specialist. Okay, thank you, Randy. Um, I will make note that if anyone wishes to testify um, that they should sign in on a piece of paper over there. Otherwise, we will accept phone calls at 715-538, uh, was it 1977? Uh, 19, 1770. Yeah. So if anyone wishes to call in, they could. Otherwise, Verge, could you give us an overview? Okay. Um, first, I'd like to acknowledge Theron Solberg, who's here. I don't know if you want to have a seat at the table, Theron. So Theron originally owned the 1.707 acres, um, and then he purchased another parcel, which triggered a violation with the property lister because when you have a lot that is created by a certified survey map and you add on to it, you have to rezone the entire piece to make it not be a violation. 
So while I was working on that violation um, from the real property lister who originally brought it to our attention, um, I also realized that this land was not in the proper zoning. So I um, sent Theron a letter saying, I think we should get this into compliance mm -hmm. now so that he would have all his zoning and everything up to par. Um, so that's a little bit of the history. He's been running the trailer sales business for years, as everyone knows. Mm -hmm. So, um, but his addition to that land triggered um, this whole meeting. We notified all the adjoining landowners, as was the town clerk and the county board supervisor, and I, I didn't receive any correspondence from anyone. The hearing was published in the Trumpet County Times 1116 and 1123. The town land use plan has the original parcel labeled as commercial and the plan, the addition par additional parcel as exclusive ag two. So it doesn't totally coincide with the town land use plan. Um, I also have a letter from the town when we get to that point. Sure. Okay. Uh, thank you, Verge, for the history. Mm -hmm. um, Theron, would you like to offer any other comments at this point in time or, you know, pretty well spelled out or? Yeah, pretty well spelled out. Um, I guess the existing parcels, the two original parcels, um, that property has been commercial for 40, 50 years. Mm -hmm. Something happened along the line where things got changed. I mean, it's it's right now residential. It's never been residential. There's never been a house there. So something along the line got changed on the zoning, but being where we added a parcel, we're just trying to get it all right and proper. So. Sure. Okay. Um, is there anyone who wishes to offer comment on this? Otherwise, um, here we have the maps up. Um, and then there's nobody registered to testify, so I guess at this point I'd, I'd hear the letter from the town. Okay, my letter is dated October 18th, 2022. Dear Zoning Department, at our meeting on October 18th, 2022, the board made a motion to support the rezone for Frenchville trailer sales to commercial zoning. Sincerely, Sue Henderson, Clerk Treasurer, Town of Gale. Okay. And Paul yeah. Halderson from the Town of Gale, the chairman is present. Paul, any comments you'd offer? Or? Yeah, um, Town of Gale doesn't have any opposition to this. It's just the we would like to see the process go in the correct way instead of we seem like we're rezoning after things happen instead of going through the steps and then the township approves it before it's developed and quite often why development happens and then we're asked to change the zoning to fit the, the yes. person's need mm -hmm. and if this would have went on the correct order the town of Galen I'm 100% sure would have approved it mm -hmm. but we would like to find out how this could go in a in a correct procedure order of steps rather than having something and now we're, yes, we're fixing something also Theron's neighbor there is also in the same situation uh, Clatter Stratcher sure. is had the same zoning and that needs to be updated too now we have these um, review of the zoning plans and I'm sure it's in the townships zoning but I don't believe the coning has it where which brought us here today because it wasn't zoned correctly or on a map correctly so I guess we're just interested in getting us finding a way to have the steps in the right order versus yeah. fixing it after the fact. I can, uh, I'll meet with you in the town board uh, at a town, uh, I can talk with you offline about this further and then uh, I can talk to the town board as well. But part of, part of the case here is there's a, uh, you know, if you look in the, the town of Gale plan, I believe the, uh, the, the new parcel uh, the comprehensive plan for the town of Gale says agriculture um, and that's um, um, regardless uh, certainly before it was uh, the business was added on to we would have liked to have seen a rezone happen before that that didn't happen um, so uh, 
you know that's why we're we're here today because uh, but the the plan for the town of Gale uh, identifies this as an agriculture property well again I've only been town chair for about a year and a half so yes I've been on board for a long time but we are privy to a lot of those yeah, well, I'll, I'll sit down. We'll, we'll set up a meeting and, and go over the whole big picture for the town of Gale. It'd be nice to review the township and get everything in. Right. With, uh, or at least review to make sure everything's correct, which I know there is a couple of situations uh, similar to Theron's there. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll do and that. again, we support Theron's uh, business there, and, and we wouldn't have uh, opposed what he's doing anyway. So. Right. No, the issue is more of an, uh, it appears to me, outside looking in a little bit, it's more of an education issue for, I do, I see what you're saying and I agree, having sat here for a year and a half or so, that we do tend to be fixing things rather than doing them the right way. Right. I'm not sure that, you know, I think that's worth worth conversation, so uh, we'll, we'll continue that. Um, and maybe Virch can make a comment, but I know a number of years ago the county did try to go through township by township and try to clear up and and make current a lot of the uh, present uses and I don't know how that you know how effective that was in the end well to my knowledge all but six townships were done and the other six are removed. one of the challenges in this process is um, in the is when we look at the plan the the recommended land use that's in the plan is different than what the landowner wants or or what the town wants so if we follow the plan then people are unhappy yeah. if we do what to keep people happy then we're not following the plan and that that that's very challenging and one of the questions i have like like for these properties here why in the town plan was it identified as I, I, was it residential or Rural whatever? Residential. Rural which residential, which is really strange. Which, <coughs> given that property, and yeah. and and so you know, from a, a, a correcting zoning perspective, we also have to think about well, how did, why is, because the plan is supposed to communicate the vision for the town. So if we go by the plan, it's really, from a staff perspective, really challenging. So that's why we need to have a sit down and and go over that. Can I just clarify that I was referring to the zoning map? Okay. Not, okay. Yeah, Not yeah. the land use plan. Right, right, right. And, right. and I, as, as somehow designated chair of Albion's land use committee, I got the, I got the paperwork with, I think, nine items in Albion that the, the use didn't fit the plan that we had to mm. work with. Spent, I think I spent close to a year working with people. All but two worked out very well. There's two still people upset about <laughs> it's the nature of the beast I think yeah. right. is, Tony is that also not affected by how the transaction or sale is recorded no that has nothing to do with it okay how often are the town plans or the municipal plans updated or does that vary 10 okay it's supposed to be the comprehensive plans are supposed to have a major update every 10 years by state law. And most of the town plans were adopted in 2018, 2017 time frame. Yeah, okay. If anyone wishes to comment on this uh, for public testimony, you can call 715-538-1770. Um, you read the letter from the town. I don't think, is there anyone else who wishes to offer testimony? If not, I will close the public hearing at 844 and I'd entertain a motion from the committee. Motion from Mr. Todd, second from Don Aldera. Um, any further discussion? The questions for Theron? I, just to clarify, I had a conversation with him prior to the meeting here. Uh, I asked about fencing, and he tells me it is now all fenced. Is, yep. that, is that a correct statement? Yeah, yep. entire property is fenced. Yep. Okay. Any other questions, discussion for the committee? 
If not, I'd call for a vote. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. So we will move on, move this on the county board in December, correct? Yes. For final approval. So thanks, Theron. Thank you. Okay, next item on agenda here, I'm going to follow my lines, is Department of Land Management fee schedule discussion, possible action. Um, the fee schedule uh, that's in, in your uh, packets, that is essentially what the, the fees we discussed back when you adopted the budget 2023 budget in I think August mm -hmm. um, budget went through um, and so this fee schedule essentially is to update the fees many of the fees have not been updated in years and again the main idea here is to try to cover our costs uh, and and have and, and instead of having the taxpayers <coughs> subsidize a development project the idea is they have the permit costs be borne by that uh, by that project owner. Um, many of these fees have not been updated in quite some time. It's not a perfect science, you know, when you when you have staff going out to a site doing a site visit. That that uh, location is going to vary throughout the, uh, the that mileage is going to vary depending where in the county it is. So generally, these are kind of the, our best guesses to try to find the happy medium. When you look at these fees and how we compare to our neighbors, we are in the middle. Um, uh, some of our neighbors are very high in fees. Um, and so uh, this is again, try, trying to take pressure off the levy and uh, reduce the subsidy of, of, uh, of uh, uh, staff <coughs> on projects. Um, there, one side note on there, there's two fees um, that this, if you approve this today, this will go in effect January 1. There are two fees that the county board needs to approve for updates. I'm not requesting those uh, be increased, but just as kind of a background, any uh, permit fees for shoreland zoning, uh, a recommendation from this committee to the county board uh, needs to be done, and then also for manure storage. Now the question is, why are those fees require county board approval and all these other ones don't? I don't know of a, a legitimate reason why other than it was some inconsistent ordinance writing on that, but to me, those really should be handled consistently. And if you would like that to be changed to make it consistent, um, we can do that at, at a future meeting. Okay. Any other discussion from the committee on our updated fee schedule just a quick question on what you were just saying Mike is it um, possible that those two particular items go to the County Board because of the amount of that particular fee no because right now I don't believe we have a fee for shoreland zoning I don't believe if we do have it I don't know what it is I couldn't find it um, and for manure storage it's similar to our livestock ordinance really it kind of in its approach um, it's not the amount, no. I, it, okay. It's just, yeah. I, I do think for consistency's sake, there is reason to probably move forward with making a change at some time with that. Yeah. yeah. Uniformity is good. Yeah. And what we're doing here with this document, too, just on kind of day to day operations, right now, um, our fees are in multiple documents throughout our server, whatever, you know, so if you want to see what our fees are for everything we permit and we do, we have to go to multiple sources. And so this kind of brings it into one document where we can manage it and communicate it to the public in a more efficient way. Okay. Right, a couple just questions on page two of the livestock facilities. I assume that the numbers not matching up is just somebody, a line got screwed so that they aren't straight across from each other. But true. But the question is, on the last two, the fees appear to be the same. So why why don't we incorporate that into one? Yeah, I think that's just I think that's just a a, a typo. You know. That the, yeah. That line should say th three uh, three hundred ab above three hundred. The, the the fee is twelve hundred, rather than two categories of the same thing. 
Yeah, and, shorten, and shorten it up a little bit. That would try to figure why it wouldn't why it would be that way. Right, it doesn't no, make any sense. No. Okay. Uh, I, can you say that one more time? I, I want to make sure I'm looking at the right okay, line. Okay, under livestock the facilities, can, this line, the, line, this, uh, this line, the, the animal line, unit oh, numbers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That last two. Oh, these are two categories. Well, it, it, good could, question. Um, could be a typo. Uh, the main change here, again, wh whatever's in black is staying yeah, the same. I, I understand yeah. all that. I'm just saying. Why are the two categories? Why are the two categories the with the same, the same numbers? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Good question. Strange. It was meant. It's just a, really a status quo minus the public hearing thing. So I didn't really look too closely okay. at at. Um, I don't know if, if that can be changed, I think it'd be a good idea. One less line to look at if it can be still be changed. Sure, we can do that. Uh, back, on the last page, I had a couple of questions. Tell you about the manufactured and hub dwellings. I'm I'm just confused on what we're what we're charging for. Okay, I, that okay. My term is a, a mobile home, but then it says for living area basements. And now basements, I understand. If we're if we're putting a manufactured home up here, what this is additional living area added onto a mobile home? Is that what we're doing? No, talking? just a living room kitchen you know wherever you're but but we but a manufactured home is already inspected before it gets here inside true but I, I, then then we we <laughs> this why, is that's why I'm, I'm asking why the living area is is included in our fee schedule you know maybe <laughs> verge has an answer on this but um it, it essentially we, we we the fees that chart uh the gec charges is they they gave us a uniform list of what okay. they do okay. and i believe if 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 it's already inspected at at the factory then we wouldn't be actually even issuing permits for that then okay Virg, can you you want to comment on how manufactured homes so dave the 385 is for the basic home okay. if yep. they were putting yep. on let's say they were putting on a screen porch adding that on to okay. the base of yep. the home that would be what the 28 cents is charged for mm -hmm. okay so it's yeah, anything uh, I, I understand that part i'm just questioning why we're talking about living area because the screen porch would be considered living area okay i don't but okay <laughs> yeah anything like with a roof or okay. you know okay. Okay. like a deck with a roof that's considered living area oh, okay. because it's Okay. It's got a roof and stuff, and they have to inspect the roof. But a deck would be a deck permit rather than a living area, right? Or no? Well, if it's <laughs> if, if they're doing it with the initial home, mm -hmm. you know, if they're doing with their initial home permit, it's included in that 28 cents a square foot. Okay. If they were to come a year later and ask for a deck permit, then I would have to charge them the zoning again and whatever the minimum fee is or the 28 cents a square foot, whichever is greater. Does that ex answer your question, Dave? Sort of. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll, I'll accept that as an answer. Yes. <laughs> so the 385 is is just the basic home, right? Yep. And then anything else that would be added to the basic home is the 28 cents a square foot. Then just for dumb question category, why does it cost more to it's to permit electrical than plumbing? What what what's? The, I'm just curious. I. That's what our contract. Uh, because our our contract with no. GEC, they, they that's how they charge us. So okay. it, it, our fees are based on recovering our costs from that contract. Okay. So I guess next time that contract's up, we can uh, reduce the electrical, not increase the plumbing. Yeah, we can. We, <laughs> we can uh, negotiate that. It's a nice thought, but we'll see. <laughs> okay. Can you sure. explain um, what the early, the residential early start fee is for? Verge. Um, the early start permit is for a home that, especially this time of year, you get people that come in and they're building a new home starting now and they want their permit now. And they at least want to get just the footings maybe in um, and, and the foundation. So prior to Kyle issuing the actual building permit and reviewing the plans for the full home, then they can apply for that early start permit. 
and the zoning and the sanitary has to be in place before Kyle can issue that early start and that will let them at least put that foundation into place. Mm -hmm. um, the camp camping units, is that per unit or is that, how does that work? That was meant to be like uh, camper cabins, um, like you see at some campgrounds and stuff. And I guess that was put in um, a number of years ago and I think GET, uh, GT High School is building camper cabins in one of their Mm -hmm. So there's a, a, a little bit different code for camper cabins versus uh, a single family home. Okay. okay. Any other questions from the committee uh, on updating our fee schedule? Mm -hmm. Questions, comments, thoughts? Otherwise, um, does anyone wish to take action? Okay, motion approved by Waldera. Second. Second by Klein. Um, to move our current fee schedule to the new proposed fee schedule starting on January 1st. Okay. <coughs> Any other discussion? If not, uh, call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, okay. So next item is our cost share payment request. Discussion, possible action. So Haley is sitting in. I am sitting in today for Becky. She's at an appointment. So um, I believe you guys should have received the cost share payment request. OK. <laughs> um, it's a long one, so bear with me. Um, so we'll start with the nutrient management farmer education grant. So this is going to be for Bill and Angela Silla, and that was for soil sampling for 750 in the town of Lincoln. Um, questions on that one? Okay, so the notice of discharge, this is going to be for the Brian Olson project for the SVL contracting. Um, we will be requesting 239,540 and 97 cents, which is the remainder of that NOD um, grant from DNR. So that is what we're requesting for that. Um, that is for the remainder of the project. You can kind of read through there all the different aspects of what it is for, um, and that's in the town of Burnside. The cost share grant, so that's the county cost share, is going to be, um, let's see, Gary George, 2,302 75 cents, and that's going to be for cover crops in the town of Arcadia. Brandon Kurth, 1747.50, again for cover crops. Lincoln is that township. Charles Johnson, that is $525, again for cover crops in the town of Arcadia. We have Jason Valor for $6,841.10, and that is for a critical area stabilization in the town of Gale. Um, Dennis and Carolyn Carlstad, we have $6,000. $31.38 for a stream bank protection project in the town of Pigeon, and then Tom Borison for $7,000 for, um, it is not actually water control structure maintenance. Well, I guess it is. It's that and uh, invasive species removal, so and that's in the town of Gale. Questions on those so far? Any questions from, for Haley? No. I think you're good to go. Okay. Okay, so the next part here is going to be the targeted runoff management, so the trim grant. This is going to be coming out of our large scale lower Pigeon Creek trim grant, um, and that's for Jamie Goplin for $5,530 for a stream bank protection project in the town of Hale. Is it? I would have thought that had been Pigeon, but. That's, that's definitely Pigeon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think that's correct. So Pigeon is where that one is at. Um, mm -hmm. So that will be finishing off the large scale trim grant um, for the Lower Pigeon Creek trim grant that we have currently. Moving on to the land and water resource management. So the land and water money. Um, so these next slew of them are all going to be for cover crops. Um, so we have Tina Rotoring for 9,743.86 cents. Town of Gale cover crop. Cody Trim, 
$2,500. Cover crop, Town of Trempolo. Rita Edmonds, 1680 Cover crop, Trempolo. Josh Weltzine, 820 Cover crops, Arcadia. Derek Waldera, 90 for this one. Cover crop skin, Arcadia. BRYN Farms, um, 1520 Cover crops, Arcadia. Williams Farm, 592 Cover crops, Arcadia. Robert Patrick, or uh, Petrick, sorry, 800, or $82.50 Cover crop, Arcadia. We're almost done. <laughs> Patricia Kulig, 215 Cover crop, Arcadia. Charles Johnson, $22.50, cover crop, Arcadia. And last but not least, we have Charlie Wicca, which is a $6,671 for a waste storage facility closure in the town of Arcadia. Okay. So That's that is full. the full list of payments. We're trying to get these on here because it is the end of the year. Um, so there is a lot coming through right now. So. Yep. Big <laughs> slew of them here at the yes. end of the year. Yep. <laughs> we need to finish off the grants and everything like that. So big yep. slew of them coming. <laughs> Any questions, Don? I do have questions, but I'm thinking I might need to take this offline because <clears throat> I'm probably the only one that doesn't know what's oh. going on here. Yeah. yeah, so here's, I guess, um, quick overview is there's two lines because we have to do what the contract amount is for, and then the second line is for our payment request. So it could be different sure. um, as far as what the contract is originally. If we do like a partial payment, then we can do just a partial, and that's why the payment request could be less than the original contract amount. Sure, sure. But overall, these are all state grant funded that we help people get dollars for or, or yeah so whatever. these are our different funding sources um the only one that is not a state funded um grants would be our county cost share grants and that's from the um county levy that we are allocated um through the budget so and then folks apply folks apply for different projects for this. yep different projects different um uh, what am i trying to say here like cover crops or, or we call them soft practices so different things on the field um, and they can apply to our our department and we will design different projects for them and they have to follow certain standards and then have an operation and maintenance for 10 years so they don't get it's not a free-for-all on money we allocate certain amounts um, we do a whole a whole process so if you want to know more I guess come find us <laughs> and we can go through that <laughs> my only other question was yeah. is there a resource out on the website that I could just understand this better yeah. or see where the application is yes or you guys created that, that, that nice document that explained yes all the different that was programs. One, of the, the, one of the I know I gave a lot of stuff to you so oh, is that one of the things you gave me <laughs> I'm not sure I, I gave it to you but I was it was gonna be in the next round of stuff okay. so <laughs> okay. Becky yeah. created a really nice yeah, it's, great yes. summary thing okay thank you and if you want to stop up I can print one off this afternoon too not a problem <laughs> yeah <laughs> so big slew of them coming in on your first one <laughs> okay any other questions from the committee otherwise uh, I'd entertain a motion I'll make that motion motion to approve by Severson second by Munson any other discussion all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed motion carried thank you yeah, thank you, Haley. Uh, next, we have our County Conservation Operations Report. Charmaine, what do you have for us this week, this month? Yeah, so I will briefly discuss what we've been doing this past month, and then I'll hop right into the Lake Management Planning Grant. Sure. So um, for tree and shrub orders, as of yesterday, we have 164 orders and a... Um, 11,645 individual trees that were sold so far for the 2023 season. Um, in 2022, we had 128 orders and 11,300 trees sold. So we already like surpassed last year's um, orders. Um, before the 2023 sale, our highest number of orders was 145 and that was in 2018. Um, so we have set the bar high for 2023 and we are still taking orders. So it's pretty That's exciting. Awesome. So is there a great amount of inventory left or are we getting down? We're there? getting a lot sold out. So yeah. 
Yeah. Act now if you want to get in. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for so moving on, uh, for poster speaking contests, um, those entries are due December 20th. Um, also, we are still taking donations for the silent auction at the Land and Water Annual Conference. And uh, we will be taking donations up until mid-January. Um, donations can be cash, so we can use that cash and buy gift cards, or you can also donate um, items. So we'll take anything that anyone is willing to donate. So um, for 2023 county cost share projects, uh, we finished ranking our projects that we received over this past year, and we prioritized the grass waterways and grade stabilization structures. Um, for the grass waterways, we are hoping to get job approval, so we really wanted to prioritize those to get uh, myself, Rick, and Haley um, our job approval. Um, but more specifics about this county cost share, uh, we will discuss um, during January's meeting. So, for non-metallic mining, so I have sent out an end of year an annual report forms. Um, to the mining operators that are over an acre, the frac sand mines, as well as under an acre. Um, and those are due back to me by January 31st of 2023, and I have received some of those um, reports back. Um, so next, I guess I will jump right into the Lake Management Planning Grant for the Tremplo Lakes Resolution. So. A little recap about this um, Trumple Lakes. So there are two that we would like to improve. That's first and second lake in Trumple. And um, those lakes have been receiving a lot of nutrients. A lot of nitrogen and phosphorus are getting into these lakes and it's creating um, crazy amount of um, curly leaf pondweed growth, which are invasive aquatic plants. So we are working on um, a lakes management um, plan. So that's the very first step on um, trying to manage these two lakes. So I submitted in a grant application and um, with that, that grant application, uh, one of the requirements with the Wisconsin DNR is that they need an authorizing resolution for this grant. And um, for that, um, for this resolution, um, so for if, if you have this sheet in front of you, I'm not sure if you guys do, but um, so we so um, we want to sign and submit the application, and that would be for the director. Um, then also enter into an agreement contract with the DNR would also be the responsibility of the director. The submit required reports to the D DNR to satisfy the agreement contract as appropriate would be the county conservationist. Submit reimbursement requests to the DNR per the agreement contract would be the fiscal coordinator and assign and submit other documentation as necessary to complete the project per the agreement contract would be uh, the responsibility of the county conservationist. Um, so these are the um, duties that each of these um, uh, positions will hold for these grants. So if one of us were to leave, it'll still be carried out. Um, so we are asking for, um, I guess, approval of this resolution. And also um, for the, I should back up. So um, this grant is for $10,000 and the county match, cost share match is 5,000. So um, for us, we'd contribute 5,000 to this grant. Okay. Yes. Yep. And I should say too, so um, once this gets approved for the authorizing resolution, um, I would submit in the documentation back to the DNR and then um, they will prioritize all the grants that they received and we won't hear back until mid-February, so February 15th roughly, to see if we receive the grants and then March 15th is when you can implement the grant. So we could start right away in 2023, so. Okay. Any other questions from the committee on, on this grant or the Lakes Project in general? 
what will that allow us to achieve that ten thousand dollars yeah so actually um with that um we will create a lakes management plan it'll be a, a comprehensive document and this would require having public input as well so we'd actually have surveys and get um, public interest um i think that's very important for the lakes management plan just as for angular interests as well as people that live in those lakes uh, we want to hear their input input and keep as transparent as possible um, so the next step too would be once we get public input would be um, conducting um, surveys just to see what we have for native aquatic vegetation then how much do we have for curly leaf pondweed as well as looking at shoreline habitat and just doing like a general assessment of um, what are in those lakes and nutrient levels too and this is important because um, we would like to remove the curly leaf pondweed and this will allow for better recreation fishing improving aquatic habitat for those lakes um, so that's our yeah. big goals yeah the goals I, I kind of understand I guess I'm just wondering like so this will support the, these dollars will support your time Yes. To achieve these, or is it for buying something in particular, or? Yep, so this would be, um, for the cost share, that would be our time. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Yep. And, and it, we could also use it if we were going to hire uh, a contractor to do parts of the work, it would pay mm -hmm. for that. And ultimately, all this work um, creates the foundation for us to qualify for future grants. So mm -hmm. if we were going to do a treatment um chemical treatment for the curly leaf pondweed um, we can't get those grants without this lake management grant first yep. it kind of lays out the vision the current situation and the challenges and um, it's the the first step going forward and I don't believe I don't know uh, other people have been around more I don't know if our office has been that engaged in uh, lake management down in the in the Trempolo lakes before so this is this is um, kind of a new area of con uh, con conservation that we're involved in. And uh, of course, Charmaine has a uh, big background in fisheries, so. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and it sounds wonderful, and I hate to be the, the one that's gonna make the, movie, the meeting go really late, but um, do we have other, in what is the county's level of involvement in any of the lakes in the county? Is it, does it vary, or? This is it. This is the only. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the start. beginning. It's a start. Yeah. No, but I mean, we have, so we could potentially have involvement in lakes in the city of Independence or in the city of Blair, or I th I how does think, that work? I think those, uh, our office has been involved, you know, in past decades regarding Lake Maranuka and some of these things to different degrees. That's really But going. we do have authority or um, a vision to be involved in more of that. We need to work as a partnership with uh, those lakes are within municipalities, so we right. need to work in partnership with them. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So you Please. mentioned first and second lake. Um, are we seeing the same issues with the other lakes down there? Um, so first and second lake would be, I'd say, the worst because they are the ones. First lake has a spring coming right into it, and it's the very first lake in the chain of the lake. So most of the um, curly leaf pondweed about about 90 percent of it in first lake is covered in curly leaf pondweed and then the second lake is about half so it's just kind of working its way down so first and second lake would be the worst or the most concern sure. any other questions for Charmaine on this good discussion if not uh, I'd entertain a motion to move forward with a cost share grant for lake management planning. I'll make a motion. Okay. Second. Made by Klein, second by Larson. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Uh, thank you for your work. So, uh, next, we, we have this to sign. Uh, we have a City of Arcadia Uniform Dwelling Code Co-op Agreement, something new. Uh, currently, um, the county under, uh, under its uh, Chapter 23 Uniform Dwelling Code, we perform 
permitting and inspections for all the incorporated municipalities and the towns except for city of Arcadia and the city of Blair um, the city of Arcadia has someone who is a, a contracted employee who is retiring and uh, they are looking um, for a way to continue to deliver those services this uh, agreement um, outlines how we would work with them um, and uh, if you approve it today um, we would, would then pass this on to them for them to approve at, at their city council or, or committee however they do it on their end um, but again this would this we we'd be doing the same services um, just uh, working with um, the city of Arcadia um, again this is just for uh, first and uh, one in two dwelling homes um, according to the ordinance and, and and of course detached garages so currently we contract that work out we have a contract with GEC general engineering company consulting Can't is there any this. reason to think that they may not have capacity to be able to manage an increased volume I don't think so they have multiple staff and uh, I was in I spoke with them and they thought it would be fine um, the city says most of their development is more in the multifamily area um, I think we'll my guess uh, is GEC uh, depending on how much uh, we get education out to the public and, and working with the city uh, my guess they'll perm uh, their permit levels will be higher than they were in years past uh, but they're pretty confident that the bulk of their residential projects are multifamily but that'll play out but I'm, I'm not concerned at this point okay and the only other question I had is it just says in here that we will set the fees usually when I see a contract the, the, the fees are included in that so I guess I'm just wondering how that works um, the uh, schedule of fees so that you just approved thank you yeah. Okay. Any other questions on the UDC contract for the city of Arcadia? Hearing none, yes. Dave? Curious. What has Arcadia been doing in the past? They have a contracted employee who okay. lives a fair distance from the city. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Otherwise, I'd entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Okay, motion by Andy Todd to approve. I'll second. Second by Randy Severson. Any other discussion? All in favor of approving the uh, contract, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> we will. Well, next we have surveyor's report, and I do not see Joe here at this time. It's number 11. Oh, no. review of city, uni yeah, county uniform dwelling code ordinance. You're right. Sorry. Mark is here. Mark is here for this. Yeah. And he looks excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was asked to kind of make a little short, brief um, recap on why we have what we have. In 2004, the committee at the time approved that they wanted to have detached garages included on the inspections, you know, as far as UDC stuff goes. And then it was approved in 2005 and was as part of our ordinance. And then in 2016, it was once again revisited to include, you know, an additional inspections with, with pole buildings types things because people were using those structures as houses. You know, there's these new houses were becoming more popular. And again, reiterating the inspection of detached garages as part of our inspection for UDC. And it was brought, you know, through the process, you know, through approval from our committee and also with township input. So, I mean, I don't know what the discussion was if why we, if we want to change that, but that's kind of the history of it and why it was all brought to the way it is right now. So, what, what does, uh, state statutes say on what is required I think what is required is the inspection of one and two family dwellings that's what's required but the municipality which would be us in this case 
can go above and beyond with what we did with our ordinance. But okay. So the ordinance also includes uh, uh, remodels. So if you're doing new wiring inside your house or turning a closet into a half bath or something like that, you would need a permit for, and an inspection for that. And then an addition to a home, and then of course detached garages. Okay. Questions from the committee? <clears throat> Excuse me. Thoughts? I guess uh, one one place my my mind goes is what do our neighbors do? I mean, is this consistent with neighboring counties? Any idea? I guess I'm not really aware of what the neighbors do. I mean, I'm not involved with the UDC inspection all that much, but I know. Like Jackson County in particular, I think they, they use GEC for their inspections also. I think uh, like Eau Claire or Chippewa maybe might have a building inspector on staff as a county employee. Mm -hmm. But I think they do overall inspect things like we do in most cases. I don't think... And some counties probably do little or nothing, you know. It's, it's, it, it's, uh, my sense throughout the state is that it tends to be a a municipality uh, process so like uh, cities and villages typically um, do their own I, I I would think that's maybe more the norm I think this working with the county is a little bit unique I'm not saying in a bad way or a good way it's just a, a little bit different um, I know up north uh, where I was, all all the um, all the UDC was uh, the county was not involved in the UDC, and so each town and village had their own different um, whether or not they include none of those up north uh, in the county where I worked uh, inspected detached garages, and sometimes they inspected additions, but they set a square footage, you know, like in addition to over 500 square feet or something like that. I think it's really pretty highly variable throughout the state. Um, I think Becky lives in Jackson County. I don't think they inspect detached garages in Jackson, I believe, right? I just finished building a house in Jackson County, and um, if I wanted to add on to my home, I would not require a building permit. I would require a zoning permit. And if I wanted to do a detached garage or an accessory building, I would just require a zoning permit, no building permit. The purpose of the of the Uniform Dwelling Code really is to ensure compliance with regulations for safety purposes. So in the scope of a detached garage, how much involvement do we really feel we need to have given that there isn't anyone who's residing in those, presumably? I mean, that should be the assumption if it's a truly a garage. I think it has a lot to do with electric maybe in there because you're running power from your, your main house to the garage. That might have been the, one of the deciding factors. That was in the minutes of, that was kind of broached upon in the minutes of the, in the 2016 discussion. And um, and I don't know about UDC, but I get this, I get calls from real estate people and, you know, interested home buyers. They want to see a paper trail of <laughs> septic being done correctly. Lenders want to see stuff done correctly. And I think having a UDC paper trail inspection might ensure a little bit of a security blanket for some of these people. I mean, it, just because someone isn't going to get inspecting it doesn't mean it shouldn't be being done correctly in the first place. I mean, it's just right. being inspected. So, One other aspect of this is, um, and Verge can talk a little bit, a little bit about this because she deals with um, people at the counter every day what's the definition of a detached garage versus a machine shed versus um, and that whole thing um, or or let's say just a, a, a garden shed is a garden shed a detached <coughs> garage where and where does a shed turn into a detached garage there really isn't a definition in the ordinance for that I think we got to put some responsibility on some of the homeowners too. If they want to sell their house, if they don't have it done right. Guess what? The person who's buying it don't have to buy it. So I mean, I, how far can we go with who has power and who don't? And 
we're going to babysit our homeowners <coughs> and so on and so forth. I think we just got to. As far I don't know, as just my opinion. electrical and plumbing, it, it might not be visible to, you know, if it's in walls, you know. I agree with that. Again, they're not living in it, and it's up to but the person buying that place too to, if they say, you know, you don't have proof that this is done by a electrician that's certified. I'm not going to buy it. I mean, it's just we've got to have some kind of response. But how far can we go? I mean, that's just my opinion. Even a home inspector you know without being able to visibly see the electrical they assume and and you know they condition that with their i, I just think it's absolutely a, a good idea especially with the things mark mentioned one one aspect one option you might want to consider on detached garages um uh you know you know some detached garages may not have electricity in it mm -hmm. So maybe uh, one thing you may want to consider is is maybe it's um, uh, it, it's the electrical in a in a detached garage that is inspected. So that would probably I would think I uh, think that would that be a different handled different fee, or for like detached garages is that uh, um, all one fee with the electric and the structural elements? Uh, no, they're charged separately. But I want to comment that you know. When we had that heavy snowstorm a few years ago, there were a lot of collapses. And that's one of the things the building inspector checks for. Like on a detached garage, is, is it going to meet snow load and stuff like that? The other thing is, is that this was taken to the municipalities themselves and asked, the towns and so forth, whether or not they wanted those. And that was in the minutes, too, that they were consulted. Um, the other thing to answer Mike's question, yeah, there, you know, there's a construction fee, there's an electrical fee. So a lot of people put plumbing in their garages now. There's a plumbing fee, so that's mm -hmm. all I have to. Say. So what was yeah. what is the what is the reason this is currently before the committee? What drove this to, to being questioned to begin? A request with? from a committee member to discuss it. To me, this comes down to how far do we go as a government entity in protecting people from themselves? And I think we need to find more personal responsibility with life rather than we take care of everybody. Is there a potential, what I hear, what I, to um, your point, sir, I think is there the potential to make it an option to have the building inspected if that per if that builder does want to um, have the paper trail and and so forth rather than making it mandatory my first thought and I don't work here obviously is that it would become a nightmare for tracking and, and knowing who's doing what and who's not and what's required and what's not I, I do believe it needs to be uniform that's my yeah. my own personal opinion if it was optional, we just wouldn't um, issue permits. It would just be up to the individual uh, property owner to contact a building inspector and as a private contract between that property owner and that inspector, it, the county would not be involved at that point. So it could be optional, but we would, we would not be tracking anything. Sure. It's always an option uh, for property owners. If, if they want- independently. Yeah, sure. if, they, if, if they want a, 50 foot 50 square foot garden shed inspected they can on their own in hire someone to do that if they we're want good in theory well, we're mm -hmm. oh, well this would be if we didn't have that just say yeah this would be going outside of our just say we changed it he's just saying that you could in theory contact there's nothing banning it. a property yeah. owner saying oh you sure. can't you can't contract with a building inspector so if, if you wanted to go that route, you could. And right now, most home sales include an option in the offer to purchase that they want inspection. To, uh, an inspection done. That's a different type of inspection. Yeah. It is, yeah. Well, no, yeah. Not some of the reports I've seen. Well, I mean, the yeah, electrical is in the, in the walls already, unless you're going to yeah. open up walls and things like that. And, I, and a lot of times, they preface these inspections with visible what they can see you know they can't go beyond that but in, in the real world a lot of the, our inspections are that way too Tony I know what I'm 
few municipalities regulate the size of your additions mm -hmm. per square footage in your lot, say in villages. But one question I'd have is with these garages having plumbing or whatever, <clears throat> is there sanitary, what, would the sanitary need to be larger? Yeah, they're going to take that into consideration. consideration. Yeah. So they, so the, okay, so what comes first? Basically, I suppose the planner then or the engineer that approves the plan first. Most of the time, the ones we see mostly is a house that's been there for years. Then they build a garage years later. Oh, they'll put a bathroom in it, and then they'll run it. Can that I, doesn't, that's when a I don't think that adds it. substantial volume to your septic overall. I mean, it's not. That's kind of what the norm is that I've seen, you know. But if it was being all built brand new, then they would just factor all that Correct. in at yep. the start of it all, you know. And and we don't see it very often, but it happens, you know, especially if the, their garage is 100 yards from the house and they don't want to run to the house, you know, they'll come up with something. Mm -hmm. Do we have a sense for how many times we've inspected garages that have had issues that we've needed to enforce compliance? That's a good question. I don't think so. I mean, I don't do UDC inspections and I haven't that's the construction site or whatever. But that would give you an idea as to the necessity of it probably. I yeah. could reach out I could reach out to Kyle and GEC and, and, GEC and, and see. I what think that would be useful data. Yeah. yeah and on small projects oh excuse me. But on small projects like this a lot of times the inspection includes a picture or two sent to the inspector and he approves it. So it's not picture overly being taken intrusive by either, the person though. and or contractor. Which isn't overly intrusive either to that no. extent. No. Okay. Is that a, a time sense deal? Just take pictures and send them there? Pretty so much. that way, you, same day approval or right. whatever, yep. if you're moving on? Yep. <clears throat> so, right now, as we have it, like you mentioned, Mike, that it's not very clear on the definition. Would it, I mean, would it be reasonable for us? To take time and clarify the definition or I mean verge deals with it you know I just I had a uh, at the front desk but you know you, you hear people come in oh it's not a detached there garage. is a definition of detached garage is in the UDC ordinance yeah and uh, my let's see if we can uh, let's let's read it uh, we can find it um, bottom line here is what I've observed and seen is, is uh, you get in debates, is it a machine shed or is it a detached garage? How do you determine the difference? And I don't know if maybe Mark can find it in here, find the definition of a garage, but my sense is that it's not overly clear. Where they come up with the, trying to pick the different definition is how much they want to pay for their permit. You know, if they want to pay fifty dollars, they're going to call it a machine shed. If they want to call it a garage, it, let's say you got a, an acre parcel with a house and you're building a new detached garage, it's kind of hard to call that a machine shed. You know, and it kind of boils down to what they want to pay for their permit and what they want to pay for permit fees. I think you could darn near put some size parameters in there. Yeah, I think you you can make a a garage into a shed pretty easily, yeah. and then vice versa based off what you call it, but I do think dimensions plays a role. I mean, you, don't say, you don't see too many 100 by 100 detached garages. Correct. So. Well, I mean, I, <laughs> I think you can, <laughs> you, you, absolutely. You would like be, to have one, but it, I don't see too many of that. <laughs> it would be clear to say accessory buildings of X size. Over such and such square feet. I, I actually Maybe. think that- That, that would that take, the, take the vagueness out of it. Yeah. Maybe size, and then related to whether there's electrical and plumbing, also potentially. If there, if we find that that's been an, an issue, issue when we talk with GC. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The definition is up on the screen. Yeah. Uh, yes. I can't see it. Yeah. <laughs> it says a detached garage in this what, ordinance is what? defined as a structure that's uh, used for storing motor vehicles. It has any anything more than two sides? It doesn't really have any thing else. In the past, I think one definition, if it had an overhead garage door, which that what doesn't, that's not a, so if you put a sliding door on it, may or, may not or it's three sides without a 
you know, there's accessory buildings. So if it's a three-sided structure for tractors or whatever, well, then that's not a detached garage. People at home, though, can. Sure. So if we looked at you know, putting everything together a certain size and then you know, whether or not they will be allowed to put in their own plumbing. I think, I think that's a good start and, you know, come back with some more information and we as a committee can decide and another there. thing, I believe there's a recent update to ag buildings in the state code that all ag buildings are required to be ins subject to inspection and that sort of thing. I, I if that is, that wouldn't affect uh, But you're talking of changing to a machine shed. So if a machine shed might become an ag building, so you... Right, <laughs> and, I, and I believe that would be state, in state inspected, right? Um, Dave, they, they've state. clarified agricultural as commercial now. So the electrical has to be inspected, right. and we don't do that. Right, that's what I was saying. Yeah. So, so, that, they so that becomes subject, when you talk, get into the machine shed category, that now becomes subject to, to the state inspector, for, especially for electrical, yes. Yeah. Well, they used to come in and say it was an ag building, and now I tell them, well, if you want to call it an ag building, that's fine, but you're going to have to deal with the state on the electrical yeah. inspection. Yeah, yeah. So. All ag buildings now come under that umbrella. Category. So yeah. basically that, that tends to reinforce that what we are doing probably is closer to what we should be doing. I mean, you can definitely make that inference from if the state's going to start inspecting those type buildings also, then maybe we aren't out of line with what we're doing. I think at this point, here's my you know, attempt to summarize it and keep things moving, is I think we do a little bit more homework, and I do like the idea of, of checking in with GC and, and the, you know, frequency of incidents or however you want to look at it uh, where they find issues and um, dig through it just a little bit more and we can talk about it more in January if that would be workable for everybody yeah. thoughts good okay all right with that in mind we will move on from that and now we will move into the surveyors report that would be great in the meantime I need you to sign a okay uh, in the meantime, should we tackle, what is it then, item 14, approval of purchases over $500, why don't we get that taken care of, is that Becky? Did you want to do any leeway into it? Okay, so um, a lot of times when it comes to the end of the year, certain departments are classified as using their budget as a Christmas account, which is not the case. It's proper budgeting to make sure that we have enough money left over in our budget to purchase the things that we need that we didn't dare purchase at the beginning of the year. We didn't want to put ourselves in the hole and cause any issues. So DLM waited to the end of the year to make sure we have enough money left over to buy certain aspects to help our um, workers in the field. So um, we have these tablets that we are starting to do use and do we have one down here at all? Oh, uh, just like theirs. Yes. Okay, yeah, it's, ju it's just like yours. Yes. <laughs> um, they're going to be ruggedized, so when that, that means that they're going to have a case on them. So when our people go out to the field to do surveys, they will be able to take them out there and plot the points right then and there. They'll be able to sign contracts in the field. Um, we won't be running back and forth with paperwork, losing paperwork. And we are hoping to actually get um, an electronic notary at this point as well. Um, to be able to just handle all of this stuff right then and there when we meet the landowner right away. It'll bring, it'll decrease what we're spending in employee time out there, get them back doing other projects and not spending time chasing people. So moving towards a computerized version is the best way for us to go. Um, we have approval from the state to do everything electronically. Um, I actually have that email taped to the inside of my stuff upstairs, that way we can't lose it. <laughs> um, but. Uh, this is honestly a really great move for DLM, but in order to do that, we need to purchase some of these. One of which I'm fairly certain, I'm 98% certain I can get with a grant. Um, so that would be cost of one of them, but we need a couple more, um, and that would come out of the budget. It should not exceed 1,500. Um, those numbers come from IT. We don't need to worry about um, the multiple um, bids or anything on these because this is stuff that is approved by IT. Um, so they've already taken care of all the legwork on that, but before we have them put the order in, we want to make sure that you guys are aware because it is over 500. Um, the other thing, aside from these tablets that will be going out in the field, um, are standing stations at our 
work at our desks. Um, we have a couple of the manual ones. If anybody has any back issues, you'll realize that you cannot lift a manual standing station when your back is out. Um, I can vouch for that 100%. I have the first electric one in um, the office where you just push the button and the whole table rises, and there, it's absolutely fabulous. I find myself standing most of the time. Um, these are upwards of 900, but I have gone and run the numbers, and there is room to purchase a couple of these, too. We're looking to do four of them. Um, so with your guys' approval, we would like to do the standing desks and the laptops, or the tablets. I don't want to call them a laptop. It's a tablet. Um, and just note that we do have the funds left in the budget to cover these. Okay. Any questions from the committee? I think it sounds like... With good. the desks, I just want to be sure that their size and configuration will be able to be moved to however your new department will look, if that is such a thing in the new building. That is an excellent question. So um, I know that the one I have right now is the six-foot one, and they do have a five-foot option. Um, which is actually a little bit cheaper. So it just depends. Um, they have not given us a guarantee on where we're going yet. That's the only issue. I don't know if you've found anything else out since yesterday. In yeah. the small area that we were at before, they yeah. six would have they fit. Had a, the remodel plan is very dynamic. Um, a month ago, we were moving up to where the health department is. Um, as of yesterday, we're moving someplace else. Uh, that uh, they have yet to determine so and with the um, the spaces in the health department I went up and measured those um, they were nine foot across and so a six foot desk would have fit in there um, I really can't see an office being smaller than a nine foot across space so um, the six foot shouldn't be an issue they are wider than this this is actually narrower so I mean if you add on about probably eight inches longer um, I'm definitely it's familiar your with them um, we use them but we can do the five foot too it's not an the biggest issue is those the Veridesk the little Veridesks when you go to stand up you even if you have electronic the small Veridesk the rest of your desk doesn't come up with you there's no, no I one definitely work. support the the functionality of them and um, I, I'm I'm just concerned that not knowing the configuration of the future building it seems like it might be I will tell you that they're no different than the desks we already have like size wise maybe this is a non-issue I don't know enough about what the new building is and what the plans are for it but I sure wouldn't want to spend money I, I'm also involved in another sure. big building <laughs> fiasco if you will and know that um, it scares me that that level of detail you don't know about your department yet because even though you have a five foot desk or a six foot desk the configuration and where the data ports are and all of the power and all of those things really impact the way the layout of the room is mm -hmm. and so I just don't know if it would be feasible to get to a better point in the planning before we purchase those just to be sure we're not doing something that ends up what happens if they let us know in the next week or so but this meeting is over and we can't do we have to spend it by year end is that yeah, really yeah. the point that's yeah that's the driving point and um could we make a motion to, to the sense of if if we figure out how big our space is going to be we have approval from the committee to purchase the right size desk my, my yeah i don't know I, to me that it's pretty the desk is pretty similar um to what we have now and I, I would be surprised surprised if the spaces we have would not be able to accommodate them but you, n you never know um, um, but uh, yeah we, we we don't have a design space of where we're going and we also don't have funding yet allocated for this remodel project also so I guess for the amount I'm sorry I, I do talk out loud a lot as I'm thinking I guess for the amount of money and the fact that there's multiple departments somebody would be able to use them down the road if for at whatever reason you couldn't so there's probably a multitude of uses so it's well, probably fine I, I, I suppose it'd be an option too. you purchase them the people you're buying them from here's the money don't ship them until we know and you I get you'd think they'd make an agreement with you to say hey if they don't work for you we refund you but at least the money's spent and it's um 
as long as the bill is dated for this year that's all right. it really matters that's all it really matters. i mean if that is an issue i'm just throwing yeah. it out there if that's an but issue like the companies um, work with you. you you boil it down and more than likely if they didn't work here which is probably unlikely also somebody else can probably use them so i, I think that that's probably a good approach to have with this building project too for that matter like we'll work together and we're going to make this work so Haley, did you have anything else to offer? I saw, okay, we're good. Uh, any other questions from the committee, comments? Otherwise, uh, I suppose we need a motion to approve. A motion by Andy Todd, second. second by Stacy Klein. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, uh, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. You can get those coming. Thank you. Uh, now, Joe, let's talk about our surveyor's report. Uh, you should have a report in your packets there. Um, we worked in the town 23 North Range 7 and 23 Range 8. Um, we, between the two of them, we maintained an additional 40 corners. That pretty much takes care of the budget for 2022 for corner maintenance for this year. Um, there was some also some time in there for drafting uh, record forms, addendums based on the uh, maintenance uh, data that we uh, compiled. And we did, of course, uh, the normal entering the fieldwork data into the database for previous projects to get caught up. You can see in the exhibits, Town 23, Range 7, dark circles indicating corners that were maintained and also in 23.8. And then there's a compilation of the time on the final two pages. Any questions on that? Any questions for Joe on his report? Otherwise, we can move into our 2023 contract uh, for surveyor services. Yeah, um, typically we've had a contract that consisted of one page with an extra large uh, signature block just to fill the paper up, I think. Actually, I'm kind of used to doing stuff on a handshake, but uh, contracts, I guess, are necessary. Um, Mike showed an interest in having that contract reviewed, and now we have a draft contract of, well, two and a half pages. I haven't had a lot of time to go over this, uh, due to some of the clauses in the contract, I'm going to need a little more time to take a look at it. There are some things in there that are definitely going to impact my rates, my suggested rates uh, for, for work, because it'll add additional cost to me, um, mainly the insurance aspect of it. Um, historically, I haven't been required to have insurance. I've been here, I think, now t roughly 26 years. And uh, I can only imagine, this was drawn up by the previous Port Corp Council 26 years ago. I don't even remember who that is. Probably Laverne Mahalik, I'm thinking. And um, if insurance was required back then, I'm sure we discussed it, discussed the cost, and discussed the impact on the rates. Um, quite frankly, I, I think I give the county a really good deal. Uh, my rates are, if you were to compare to other surveyors in the area, especially the bigger surveyors who who do have this type of insurance policy on a regular basis, I think you'd find these rates probably 40 to 50% higher. Um, my hope is that we'll t be able to take a look and resolve this insurance uh, issue uh, in the contract and a few other minor issues and maybe be ready for your next meeting if that works. Is that friendly and workable for the committee? issue so do you currently maintain insurance it's just at a lower level or is it just well it's it's when I started working with the county I was Joe Nelson registered land surveyor and I worked four hours a week and there was no remonumentation at the time and so that was a fairly uh, benign duty it was basically come in here take care of our records uh, we weren't even reviewing CSMs at the time and get us up to standards that the state expects to see based on state statutes. Then the, um, the need for remonumentation about a year or two later became self-evident. And then I started working as Nelson Land Surveying. I had a corporation and I employed 
about six people, and I had insurance for that corporation. Um, my errors and emissions insurance basically was, was built around the need for construction staking for multi-million dollar buildings. So there was, there was a need there. When, uh, when we finished the remonumentation, I actually sold that private business and I formed uh, Public Land Survey and Services, LLC, um, pretty much 100% to work with Tremplow County. As a result of that, to keep my rates um, similar to where they were before, I dropped those insurances. I mean, I think E&O insurance at that time cost me about $15,000 a year with the number of employees I had. My general liability was probably 2500 a year, um, plus the other insurances. So for a $30,000 contract to spend $15,000 a year in insurance, you know, you gotta kinda weigh it out. I weighed it out in that if I'm working pretty much by myself, the insurance didn't, wasn't practical for me. In fact, if one were to look at my cost of insurance to have half a dozen employees was one of the reasons I sold my company. My health insurance costs, my EO costs, my liability costs, um, car insurance, it, it wasn't real attractive to stay in business in that form. And plus my age doesn't, doesn't uh, change the things too. So that's pretty much the, the general, the, the uh, two minute history or three minute history of, of where we're at and how we got to this point. Okay. All right, thank you, Joe. Uh, any other questions for Joe? Thoughts? You guys okay moving forward and we revisit next month after Joe's had time to review and uh, we can discuss further at that point. On our end, do we need to bring this to Corp Council to talk about the insurance? Court Council's sitting here with us. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yes. Uh, yes. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> um, in regards to the insurance provision, <clears throat> what's in there right now is what the industry standard is for government contracts. I'm not saying that there isn't any room that we can negotiate something different. Obviously, from the county's perspective, any contracts that we have, you know, from the county's liability perspective, having those things in there obviously are to our benefit. Um, having said that, what this committee ultimately decides would be appropriate terms is something that this committee can make that decision after some further conversations with Joe. Um, and it is my fault. I didn't get the contract until Monday morning to everybody, so that's why there's the delay. But having said that, um, certainly open for some discussion. Again, as the attorney for the county, that's just my job. And so that's why those provisions are in there. And we can have further discussion about that after we talk some more. I think, I think that's... <coughs> Good. We can do that. You do your homework. We can have discussion next month and uh, decide how we'd like to move forward. It, it, fair? Is there an option in the laws to negotiate that the county pay the insurance so that he wouldn't have to raise? Is that an option even or not? Uh, essentially, for the most part, That's parties can contract for just about anything. So that is, a, is an option to consider. Mm -hmm. I mean, more or less, that'd be essentially you'd be billing it into your fees. We'd be paying for it one way or another. So That's pretty much how it works. You boil it all down. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Okay. Any uh, other any, questions? Anything else from the committee for Joe or on this matter? Thank See you. Not? Thank you, Joe. Mm -hmm. did, oh, we, did I miss it or did we make a motion and approve Joe's payment request? Oh, we did. We, we, have oh, not we did yet. not do that. That's I'll make me. that a motion that we pay the fee. Okay. Motion made by second. Larson, second by Monson to approve Joe's. Uh, report and payment request. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? You. you get paid. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it was not intentional. Okay. <laughs> All right. So next we have our DLM Director Operations Report. Mike. All right. Uh, I was going to talk about the remodel, but we already kind of did. Uh, but things are moving along and. Um, We'll just see. I don't. Uh, I think there's a property committee meeting coming up, uh, which I will attend. Um, 
and uh, keep informed on that. Um, I would, th I would think. I, 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 maybe I shouldn't think about this, but I think there is a potential uh, opportunity for us. Uh, when I first met with Samuel's group, they mentioned possibly moving us to one of the two courtrooms, the north courtroom or south courtroom. Um, who knows um, what's being thought about now with all the the ongoing changes? Um, but uh, hopefully, um, we'll find out. Uh, soon a little bit uh, where we're going on that um, uh, as a department uh, we're uh, working on 2023 plans uh, work plans and reporting on this past uh, year for the 2022 year um, we'll be starting up soon on uh, our annual report and that's something I can I may have included you last year's annual report um, so we're doing a lot of those end of the year things um, but uh, so we got a lot going on uh, a little update um, we have a subcommittee the solar farm study committee um, and we've made quite a bit of progress the last couple of meetings we're trying to wrap this up so they can bring a report to the February ELU meeting so we have scheduled two meetings in the January. in January to kind of get this wrapped up um, and so we'll have uh, a report uh, at the February meeting. So that's where we're at. Okay. Question, Mike. Um, two questions. Um, one, residents on the solar stuff. Is there going to be a chance where residents can get involved in that with their homes besides the farms themselves, where there's deals out in Trempeleau County where people can put them up at their house to possibly. Uh, individual yeah, solar. Individuals. Oh, yeah, yeah, they can do that right now. They, but I mean, as in. Trumpelo is going to get involved in the idea of solar farms. Is there anything that they can tie it in for the residents to get a better price? Because yeah, I'm just throwing it out there. You know, I think it would be pretty difficult. I think the solar farm companies are in the business of the farms, not okay. the individual home arrays. I know um, there's there's other private businesses. Other private that businesses that specialize in okay. arrays for homes. Yeah. And one other question. Um, they have a plan this building's been being built and you get in you're in one area and then another area and then another area why why don't they just have okay we built it here's the rooms why do they keep moving you i mean why do they keep moving do you have any idea what they say well we don't like you in this spot now we're going to put somebody else in this spot why Did it give you a reason i have no idea okay <laughs> i don't understand it i, I think uh, I'll, I'll give my opinion on it i'm getting very frustrated with that same point and I don't know why we keep going down this road, but I'm getting quite irritated myself because we all need to work together on this, and I don't know where where the problems are coming from, but... I don't understand how we can be this far into a project and not know this stuff. How are we ordering FF and E? How are we, which is furniture, all that other stuff, and Fishers. figuring out where electrical ports go and all of those things? But I guess that's for the property committee. Yeah. yeah. So. You know, and our, our uh, you know, my concern is, and, 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 and I guess there's been, you know, since we, since the, 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 I guess the, you know, we had the original ideal plan that came out to, or what was going to be maybe $5 million, you know, with changes in costs. So we, we did this minimal amount approach to remodeling. And um, so one of my concerns is you know the connection of the two buildings goes right through becky's office um so there's you know how is that going to look you know i guess that's being that connection in that hallway by our office there it's only like four or five feet wide so that hallway it's needs to be wide. dealt with and so not only where are we going is a concern but the transition of opening up that building connecting it and how do we transition to a new space timing wise do we have to go work in the basement for a while do we are we going to lease space somewhere else in the city i don't think we've even i don't think that's even really quite been thought about yet but when is the building completion date i mean the the, the new justice center yeah. uh f i believe fall of 2023 we're under a year at this point so, 
and and uh, yeah and then of course yeah the connection piece is is challenging and and when you're yeah the transition part is challenging tough tough would the all the changes just mainly be due to the money issue with the rising costs and revisions well and yeah yeah we're we're yeah. you know it's 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 trying to go with a more minimalist approach you know only remodel where necessary um but there was an approach presented at the november properties committee meeting and since then that has changed and i don't know what all i know is that i was told it was changed there's a domino effect of of things happening but they wouldn't the contractor wouldn't tell me what that was so so I only know what I know all I know is we're not going to the health department anymore okay okay well thank you um, does the committee have any other future agenda items they would like to toss out about something if questions on the clarification want to talk about how's your time Tony I don't. I don't. Something to do with this Troy Wojcik, uh, town of Caledonia, with the livestock facility performance standards. Has Minerkit has been, or something that's. I know about an inch of knowledge on this one. That's um, what I am too. <laughs> I mean, he called me and says, well, "What are we supposed to do?" To me, land management should be dealing with this, not the board of adjustment. So what yeah. is what I've heard um, and I've talked to Troy I think once is that the he wants to put in a, new, a manure pit so he doesn't currently have one he spreads every day um, and he's leasing all of his land so I don't know his whole dynamic um, but he does not have room to meet the all of the um, setback standards so it's a hundred feet I I believe I don't quote me on that hundred foot. It might be a. I was going to say some might be three hundred. Yeah. Um, I got the packet. But I'm okay, the they don't know. You know, he doesn't meet some of the standards from other buildings and the road, and I think one of the property lines. So that's where the board of adjustments is coming in because it has to be a variance versus just a permit for that um, manure pit. So if he met everything, it would be a simple permit. Um, is he what I'm getting at. Acres. Correct. Yeah, the he's whole, he's a very small confined <laughs> area. So in order to get something, he would need a variance no matter what. Even if he was building, I think, a new barn, he would need a variance. So that's what I know. <laughs> no details. Sure. Okay. Yeah, and I guess if that member has more questions, maybe give our department a call. Okay, I can do that. So, Mark is down to okay. <laughs> yeah, I think Mark was the one that was yeah. more talking to Troy on that part of it. So, right. here he comes. Yeah, there that's what I know. Mark, can you shed some light on this variance issue? Yeah, there's a in the manure storage ordinance and the livestock. There's a 350-foot setback requirement for road right-of-way and property line. Troy can't meet either one of those. Okay. So we're requesting a variance for those two items because my understanding, he needs to have a manure storage to meet his nutrient management requirements. Likely we did true. have one in the past with Brian Olson, and it went through okay. based on the necessity of the manure storage to meet the nutrient management requirements and you know the road right away thing it's kind of behind his barn anyway so it's not like it's infringing any closer and then the back property line it's all agricultural back there anyways so okay that's kind of what it's all about okay it's his own house you know he's he lives right there and there's setbacks for that, but it, the, the language is if other than your own house, but Correct. he's already meeting that, so. Okay, pretty well fine. Just boiling down to that. The ordinance of the, language is yeah, what it's coming much, down Yeah, pretty much, yeah. 
I don't really see it being um, issue. an issue because we kind of stressed like variances, you know, a lot of time it's a self-created hardship. In this case, he's, he doesn't have a lot of land to spread the stuff on, so he's been required to store it, and that's it's kind of a necessity, so that's kind of why we're going with it. So would the lease requirements be like 10 years, like some of the poultry deals when they had to build a chicken barn and they didn't have enough I guess land? We, we, I don't really know about that, I guess. I mean, right now we're, I'm just going for the variance part of it for, okay. from a zoning standpoint, so. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Well, um, Randy? It's part of to he, that he's seeking some grants. Yeah, I think he's applying for, through NRCS. He's yeah. applying for some money. I haven't dealt with that, but I did work. I did talk with um, Christine and then uh, one of his engineering people. That's my limited knowledge. I'm assuming he's applying for a, like equip or something yeah. like that. Yeah, so. Okay. Any other future agenda items from anyone in the committee? If not, our next regular meeting is set for Wednesday, January 4th <clears throat> at 8.30. Is that still workable for everybody? If so, I think we're going to stick with that time. And I will adjourn this meeting at 10.05. Thank you, everyone.